Mr Deputy Speaker, in 1997, I fought Ken Livingstone in Brent East. Just enough of the 16,000 teensy winksy little votes, and I would have beaten him. <laughs> but in a hustings in Wilsdon Green Library 22 years ago, he taught me a lesson I have never forgotten. He said that as a Member of Parliament, and of course he was and I was not, a general election is an opportunity to commune with your 68,000 employers. Well, I have 79,000 employers in Rayleigh and Whitford, sir, but the principle is exactly the same, and I place on record today my gratitude to them for re-employing me to represent them, for renewing my contract of employment yeah, yeah, to speak yeah, yeah. on their behalf. In this House, we got into a terrible mess because too many people here forgot they worked for their employers and not the other way around. Mr Deputy Speaker, we spent some 40 years, and I've given away once, some 40 years in this House arguing over Europe. And in the end, the only thing we could agree on was that we couldn't agree. And so we voted overwhelmingly to give the decision to the people in a referendum. And then some in this House spent three years deliberately ignoring the result. They pulled every trick in the book, the Grieve Amendment, the Letwin Amendment, time after time, in order to try and overturn a result with which they and the British establishment patently did not degree, agree. We played a ridiculous game where some on those benches, some, and indeed some on these, yeah. stuck to a mantra of, I will never vote to allow us to crash out with no deal. What they meant was, I'll never ever vote for us to leave the EU under any circumstances, yeah. but because of the referendum, I can't say so. So finally, we had to have this general election to break the logjam. And I'm afraid those on these benches that took that view who assured us time and again they were doing what their constituents wanted, were proven incorrect, because their constituents had the opportunity to renew their contract of employment, and patently in every single case declined to do so. Also, Mr Steve Bray, the man in the hat, stood as a Liberal Democrat candidate in a Welsh constituency had the courage to put his name on the ballot paper and came sixth and lost his deposit. <laughs> and we wish him a happy and silent <laughs> retirement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mr Deputy Speaker, the war in this place over Europe, and it has been a war, is finally coming to a close, not because there was a truce, but because the British people imposed their will on us and told us unequivocally in the general election they wanted to leave. Many here had argued for two years for a people's vote. We've just had one. It's called a general election. And the outcome was unmistakably clear. The people of this country peacefully and democratically voted to get Brexit done. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, we will leave the European Union at 11pm GMT on the 31st of January. And I hope, Mr Speaker, in line with EDM2, <laughs> the House authorities may allow Big Ben to chime at that time to mark that historic occasion. Because, by God, after all this, we're not doing it again. But when we vote on this bill, when the bells ring this afternoon, Mr Speaker, we will be doing so to obey the instructions of the British people. They have given us an unmistakable order to leave the European Union, and we will vote for this bill in order to comply with what our employers have told us they want us to do. It could not be clearer, and as my honourable friend from North Shropshire with whom I have fought this battle for many years, so clearly, clearly said it's called <coughs> democracy. Yeah. Mr Deputy Speaker, the people have spoken and we will listen. We will do what they want 
and when the sun rises on the 1st of February, it will do so on a free country. Yeah. Mr Deputy Speaker, all I want for Christmas is not you. Yeah. 